Hello everyone and welcome to this Your Overseas Home webinar. My name is Rosie, I'm the Senior Copywriter at Your Overseas Home. It's great to see so many of you watching with us today, whether you're watching live or on demand. Today we'll be chatting with Joanna Mestre, a lawyer and managing partner at Matt Law, and Joanna Mill Omens, a lawyer at Matt Law, about your legal considerations that you should think about when before moving to Portugal. So before we start, um, Joanna, if you could go first, introduce yourself and let our viewers know um, a little bit about Matt Law. Sure, Rosie, thank you so much for hosting us. Thank you to Property Guy, your overseas home, for organising this, this webinar and counting with Matt Law. Uh, Matt Law is a law firm, um, a Portuguese law firm. Our offices are in Lisbon and in the Algarve, in the south of Portugal. Um, we cover the whole territory. Portugal is a very tiny country, as you know. Um, we focus uh, our advisory mainly on foreign clients, clients, foreign investors willing to, to come to Portugal and to invest here, both in the fields of real estate, corporate um, real estate and other, um, succession planning, um, taxation, and all the related litigation on, this, on these matters. Um, I'm a managing partner and a Portuguese lawyer, and I'm here with my colleague and also Joanna. <laughs> so two Joannas at the office here um, to clarify any queries and also give you some lights on what's coming in Portugal. Joanna, do you want to introduce yourself? Okay, so uh, I'm Joanna, I'm the other Joanna that will be here today. It is a pleasure to be with you today and have an opportunity of speaking of these matters. I hope you enjoy and thank you so much for being here with us. Yes, thank you for joining us. Um, so to all of our viewers today, you might have um, already had an interaction with Matt Law at our um, November virtual event. And you'll be happy to know that we have secured a date for our March 2024 show, which will be held on Saturday, the 16th of March. If you are new to your overseas home, it's a fantastic property show that you can attend from the comfort of your own home, as it's entirely virtual. It's designed to arm you with all the tools that you need to confidently buy a home overseas in Portugal. And we'll be joined by experts in property law, um, real estate. Um, honestly, the list goes on. Um, Matt Law will be there as well, um, so grab your ticket and save the day. Um, okay, so jo the Joannas um, have a presentation to share with you. Um, before I hand over to them, um, I will just let you know that we are we will have time for questions at the end of their presentation. Um, if you have any questions as we go along, do feel free to type them into the questions tab on the right hand side of your screen. Um, and I'll ask on your behalf at the end. So over to you guys. Thank you, Rosie. So we, we chose this um, title, this topic for uh, our webinar because a lot is changing in Portugal. You might have seen in the news about the golden visa and the non-habitual resident um, tax status. And you will see it's not actually an end, but it's a massive amendment um, that is coming and it's actually ongoing. So many information, unfortunately, we, we can't share with 100% certainty, but we will share what we know. And we've also said um, if we can't give you a proper answer um, now. So this is our summary. Um, we will, of course, um, give you a brief context on the end of the Golden Visa and the NHR, so you understand why. And then we will jump on to, well, um, answering the question, what does Portugal has to offer to you guys and anyone uh, willing to invest in Portugal? And when I say invest in Portugal is um, in Portuguese real estate, but not, or not only, and moving to Portugal. So we have many clients doing this, um, you know, all together. So moving and investing or buying and moving to Portugal, but also um, in different stages. First, buying property with a view of in the, in the future retiring in Portugal or, 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 you know, just visiting or having their investments also in Portugal. We will then talk about the golden visa what um, is the shape of the golden visa nowadays 
And lastly, give you an overview of the other residence visas available and also explaining the difference between the golden visa and other visas. Um, and last and most importantly, a Q&A for, for you all uh, willing to make your questions and discuss with us. Okay, so why? Why ending Golden Visa and Anindja when these were so attractive programs? As many of you know, Portugal was um, is suffering a, a massive housing crisis. There is a shortage, a shortage on housing for not only Portuguese families, but for, I will I prefer to talk about Portuguese residents because it's not a matter of Portuguese versus non-Portuguese, but people living in Portugal. Um, this led to the approval of um, a, a program or a package known as More Housing, uh, in Portuguese, Mais Habitação. Um, you know, it's a set of measures willing to increase the offer on housing, on the housing market, both in the field of uh, purchase and sale of property, acquisition, but also in the lease market. Um, this was uh, also, uh, um, required to reduce you know the the feeling of the social injustice between the portuguese we call it old and new tax residents and this is more related to the nhr it's a tax tax benefit or tax status that many of you might be aware of um but the feeling and in, in very simple terms was okay portugal is very good but for those moving here not for those already living here um, so this created a feeling of social injustice. Um, it's not very um, popular also amongst the politicians, so uh, they needed to do something. Um, these two um, ingredients led to a massive amendment on the Golden Visa program um, in a way that real estate investment is no longer eligible to get a Golden Visa. Also, a reshape on the NHR status um to that that was restricted and actually was it's not the right um uh, the right word because the, the 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 amendments will be enforced only from january 2024 so the nhr as all of you know or the we call it the old nhr is still in force it's still eligible for those um who were planning their lives during this year um and uh, will be changed significantly from January next year onwards. Um, this NHR status was also narrowed to focus on certain qualified workers. So the, the focus is now on productive investment or, or um, professionals in, in active uh, life and no longer the pensioners. It was very attractive for pensioners. I don't think that is the case now. Last and very important, everything that we'll be <laughs> explaining here might be very temporary since we um, expect a new election on March uh, 10th um, next year. So uh, all these measures were approved by the Socialist Party, the, the government uh, that uh, is from the Socialist Party um, that is uh, uh, our executive nowadays, but everything may change in the near future. So. Um, we will keep you updated, but this is what we know to date. Okay, so answering the question, what does Portugal um, offer to, to foreign investors? And looking at the tax perspective, we call it tax opportunities. These are not tax benefits, and you'll understand, uh, because some are tax benefits, but some are pure amendments or uh, particularities of our tax system that make it more attractive for Portuguese and non-Portuguese, okay? So first, um, I would highlight the um, interesting reduction on, on the taxation of rental uh, property income that was recently approved in the context of the More Housing Programme to increase the offer on, um, on lease uh, uh, in the Portuguese lease market. So uh, you see that the longer the um, the lease agreement the shortage will be the the tax uh, on the rental income uh, and also the renewals get an extra two percent tax reduction up to the the, the ten percent in the contracts between five and, and ten years i prefer to give you an example so you understand exactly um the figures and what are we talking about so the case study we bring here is 
imagine that you sign a, a non-renewable, so a lease agreement for six years uh, for a monthly rate of uh, 1,200 euro, which means 14,400 per year. This um, income will be taxed at a flat 15% rate in Portugal, um, the, the, meaning that the net uh, income, and we call it minimum because we are not counting on deductible expenses, we, we, we don't want to complicate our case study, we are talking about a net income of 12,240. Um, moving on. I think the second opportunity that I would like to, to highlight, and is still one of the most attractive aspects in the Portuguese um, tax framework, is, is the absence of an inheritance tax for close relatives. Um, this is a, a, real, a tax exemption foreseen in our Portuguese stamp duty code on any assets received by children, parents, so we're talking about descendants and ascendants, and also spouses. Um, I want to, to mention this is, of course, limited to assets located in Portugal, because, of course, if your um, relatives um, are uh, um, inherit tax uh, assets located in other countries, the taxation might be ruled by uh, those countries' um, framework. Again, um, as in an inheritance, also living donations so if you prefer to organize your uh, estate during life and define who gets what uh, you can donate any assets to your close relatives or to whoever you decide to and again in portugal we do not tax um, donations between uh, spouses and civil partners of course to um, no discrimination is made between married and non-married couples and also um, donations between parents and children. Um, a, a small exception is made on real estate donations, uh, which are taxed at 0.8% stamp duty, but this percentage is applicable over the rateable value of the property. We call it the tax uh, um, value of the property, which luckily or unluckily, uh, depending on the situation, is quite um below the market value of a property so if you are for example donating a property that is um valued at, at 1 million probably the rateable value of that property will be around 400,000 and you will be paying 0.8% over 400,000 and not over a million okay this exemption is used as a very interesting uh, instrument on succession planning on state planning because again you can decide during your life like you, you are doing your will in anticipation and executing your will in anticipation um, you can decide to donate your your assets to your close relatives for example, with uh, a lifetime right of use. So while you are alive, you get all the benefits, but you make sure that once you are no longer here, the, 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 the person you donated, so the beneficiary of the donation will get that asset um, later on. So false. Um, there is also an interesting aspect in our uh, stamp duty code which is there is no taxation on donated or inherited again during life or after life on earth um, money from from investments. So um, we are talking about uh, monies coming from pension funds, life insurance, uh, all these um, instruments that we, we, we detail here. Um, and they will be exempted on stamp duty, on taxation, uh, regardless of who gets those those uh, money so um, unlike the previous um, cases here you can deci decide to donate or to um, um, dispose by will these monies to a third person that is not necessarily a close relative uh, again this is also an interesting succession planning instrument um i i would i would like to explain that of course any earnings arising from these investments will be taxed as any capital uh, uh, income uh, in the sphere of the, the investor. We are talking about the donation or the transfer of the pension funds itself um, that is tax exempted. Okay, so just not to overcomplicate. 
So last, I have two final topics on tax opportunities in Portugal. I would like to talk a little bit about the old and the new NHR. Um, the old NHR, let's uh, call it this way, it's the, the one, the, the, the scheme that is currently in, in force and will continue to those who have obtained the status today. So the rules will not change in the middle of the game. This is really important to any of you um, that might be an NHR or knowing people who already are an NHR or even knowing people, uh, or if you are in this in this um, situation, you were planning, you were preparing your move to Portugal during this year, but you are not yet, you know, sat here. Uh, it's, and few things are yet to be organized. But you have, for example, your visa appointment. You have bought a property. You have signed an employment contract. You can prove um, in, cer in certain uh, cases that you are preparing your move to Portugal and therefore you're still eligible to the old NHR, which is more comprehensive. As you will see, the new NHR, it's much more narrowed and limited to certain professionals. So the new NHR... Um, is limited to a set of high qualified professionals and we are talking to about professionals in the field of university education, scientific research and investigation, and also a set of jobs um, related to productive investment. Portugal has um, an investment tax code which uh, it covers the, let's, let's say this way, tax agreements made between the Portuguese government, Portuguese tax authority and foreign investors. And in the context of those agreements, certain jobs are more important to, to the performance of those of those investments. Uh, and those jobs um, fall into this concept of productive investment and will also be eligible for this NHR. We are talking about um, areas like manning, ma mining and manufacturing, IT, agriculture, fish farming, research and, and development, technological activities, um, defense, um, shared services activities. The list, this is just a few examples. We strongly believe that this list that was approved in the past two years and already revised will be again revised in the context of the approval of this new NHR. But um, first things first, so the NHR will be amended. The new scheme, the new NHR is foreseen to enter into force in January 2024. It was approved with the, the state budget, the law for the state budget um, uh, recently approved last, last month. Um, and then we believe that the government will, will revise this list of professionals, eventually uh, broadening you know, the, the, um, the professionals that will fall into this NHR. Uh, what are the, the requirements? The same as the old NHR, so this, uh, this scheme is eligible for people who haven't been resident in the, in the country for the past five years. So we are talking about newly residents, people here for the first time, or people returning to Portugal uh, and who haven't been here for, for five years. And it also requires effective fiscal residency in Portugal, so effective stay here and um, submission of and, and, and compliance with all the tax duties in Portugal. The benefits. Um, this new NHR, unlike the other, is um, it, it's aimed to attract uh, these high qualified professionals and taxes their um, employment and business income at a flat rate of 20 percent. And uh, it has a very interesting bonus, of course, it's also the tax exemption on foreign income. We're talking about capital income, um, property income, um, pension income. So, uh, and regardless of the applicable um, double tax treaty, which is also a massive dif difference from the old NHR, which was always linked to the applicable um, double tax treaties and required a more deep analysis on the consequences of the status application. I think this is my favorite one, so uh, I wanted to, to leave it for the end. So to, to explain, this is a, we called it a new moving to Portugal tax benefit. Uh, it had a different name in the past. It, it was, uh, again, an amendment to an already existing benefit that was initially designed to 
attract the Portuguese people that had to leave the country during the crisis um, after 20, uh, 2014. Um, there was a lot of immigration of high qualified professionals and Portuguese brains um, abroad. So the Portuguese government wanted to attract them. And how? Well, giving them money to their pockets. Uh, so this was redesigned and it's now a, a benefit that is not limited to previous um, tax residents here and Portuguese. So new residents or people, again, who haven't been in the country for the past five years, regardless of their job category or activity, so it's not limited to high qualified professionals, uh, may have access to this benefit. And we are talking about um, a benefit and I'll, I'll try to explain it in a very clear way. So work and business, or we call it self-employment income, up to 250,000 euro. It, this doesn't mean that you cannot earn more than 250,000, but up to this amount, the Portuguese law will only consider 50% of this income and will only tax 50% of the income. So uh, this will last for five years. It's a benefit that is allowed for, for five years um, and also requires that the professionals at stake move to Portugal between 2024 and 2026. I must warn you though that it is a very Portuguese common practice to extend exceptional exceptional regimes for a long period. The initial, initial NHR was a, a temporary regime approved in 2009, and we are in 2023 and still have the NHR. So I'm quite confident that this will be renewed um, or extended for, for a, a longer period. I will give you an example. I think with figures, we can understand much clearly what we are talking about. So here is our case study. Uh, imagine that Anthony will start a job as IT consultant of a Portuguese company and decides to move to Portugal for the first time. Anthony will be paid 15,000 per month under a services agreement, so he will be self-employed. Um, so his annual gross income will be um, 200,000. These 200,000 will be slashed in a half, so only 100,000 will be subject to tax, according to the standard and common uh, Portuguese um, personal income tax rules. Uh, the Portuguese tax rates are progressive and they vary between 14 and 48 percent, um, but they are progressive. So I, I didn't want to complicate and I'll just give you the final result. You can see, and please trust me, um, Anthony will pay a maximum amount of 38,700 on personal income tax during these five years under this new moving to Portugal tax benefit. If we consider 100,000 um, and the effective uh, uh, tax that is paid, we are talking about an effective tax rate of 19.35% uh, um, rate. So it's quite in the, in the figures of the NHR, it's attractive because it's not limited to certain professionals, anyone, regardless of the activity can benefit from this. Um, it's a, a, eligible for new residents, people who haven't been in Portugal for the, during the past five years. Of course, it requires effective presence in Portugal. What are the cons? I would say, unlike the NHR, um, the other types of income like capital income, pension income, well, pension is quite difficult but we will say capital income mostly because this is designed for active workers um, uh, uh, for example capital gains or capital income or property income will not be exempted uh, regardless of uh, if they are uh, national or foreign income so they will be included and will be uh, subject to tax here of course if foreign income is in, is declared in portugal there will be means of avoiding um double taxation uh, uh, under the international double tax treaty signed between Portugal and a lot of countries. So now we're moving to the visa and the residency aspect of our presentation. I will pass the stage on to Joana, my colleague. And okay, colleague. So thank, thank you, Joana. So I'll have the opportunity to talk to you about a bit about golden visa and residence visas. So one of our goals, but the, the 
this presentation is also to debunk the myth that the golden visa is over. Although there have been some alterations to the regime with the new bill that came into force, the moral housing program that Joanna talked about, uh, with the alterations aiming to mitigate the housing crisis in Portugal, one thing is clear. This type of residence permit is still a viable option. So who is the golden visa for? Who needs a golden visa? The golden visa is viable for third country investors, for example, UK, United States of America, China, Canada. If, on the other hand, you have a European Union passport, this will not be a viable option. Also, it is an attractive option because it requires short periods of stays in Portugal that uh, makes it possible to have a residence visa without be and a residence permit actually without becoming a tax resident in the country. So the residence permit for, invest for investment purposes, also known as the golden visa, is a residence permit that provides third country investors, as I said, the opportunity to access a unique set of advantages in exchange for their investment in the Portuguese territory. So, as I said, this is not the standard residence permit. It has a unique set of features, such as residence visa exemption, exemption short periods of stay in Portugal. So, as I said, there is a minimum seven day period in the first year, 14 days in the following years, meaning that a tax res residency with this permit is not necessary. Of course, there is also freedom of movement within the Schengen area, right to family reunification, right to apply for Portuguese nationality. It is important to note, however, that this is an analysis made case by case, meaning that just because you have a residence permit, this does not mean that you will automatically will have Portuguese nationality since there are other requirements that you must fulfill. There are, however, some cons to the golden visa, which is the high administrative fees. Sometimes um, they can reach the thousands of arrows and also uncertain timings. It is very complicated or almost impossible to give you a timing of when your process will be completed. Okay, so what's left for golden visa applicants? As you can see, there are, still, there are actually other viable options for golden visa that are not mentioned here, some such as investments aimed at the artistic world or scientific research, but these two investments are more interesting because they are aimed at private investment. So we have on the first, part of the slide, we have capital transfers of at least 5,000 euros for the acquisition of investment fund units or venture capital funds aimed at the capitalization of, of companies. And on the other part, we have capital transfers of at least 500,000 euros intended for the incorporation of a Portuguese company or the increase of the share cap capital of a Portuguese company. We will now analyze shortly, just one by one. So the first one, uh, what are the requirements? So of course, there is the transfer, the capital transfer of 500,000 euros for the acquisition of investment funds or venture capital funds. The investor, uh, the um, the funds must be, of course, focused on Portuguese companies. They must be set under the Portuguese legislation. Investors, the investment maturity must be of at least five years, and at least 60% of these investments must be made in companies based in the Portuguese territory. As the other option, of investment in golden visa is the capital transfer of at least 500 euros for incorporation of a Portuguese commercial company or increasing the share company of a Portuguese commercial uh, company. So we have two options here. The first, we have the transfer of said capital aimed at the incorporation of a Portuguese company with registered office in Portugal, which must be combined with the creation of at least five permanent jobs, which means long-term employment contracts. 
On the other hand, we have the uh, capital transfer of the same amount aimed at increasing the share capital of an already incorporated commercial company with also registered office in Portugal, and it must be combined with the creation of at least five permanent jobs or the maintenance of 10 jobs total, but with a minimum of five permanent jobs and for a minimum of three years. What does this mean? Meaning that at least five jobs must have long-term employment contracts and these jobs must be maintained for a period, for a minimum period of three years. Okay, there are, however, some important notes that uh, we must, of course, inform you. In, this type, in these two types of golden visa, the investments can be done individually or through a single shareholder limited liability company, in Portuguese, Sociedade Unipsual por Cotas. The cost of a Portuguese company goes around 220 to 500 euros, sometimes a little bit more. And also the incorporation of a Portuguese company can be a pretty straightforward process with the possibility of the incorporation being made online in, in, in a space of about one to two weeks. Another important aspect, at the, at, as Joana said, uh, the More Housing pro Program brought some changes, and now these types of investment cannot be aimed directly or indirectly at real estate investment. This is the biggest change of the More Housing Program related to the Golden Visa investment. So what, did it, what does this mean exactly? If you plan to invest on a fund that will, on the other hand, invest on a company whose activity relates to real estate investment, then your investment will of course be valid, but not for golden visa purposes. The, so this actually means that it's really important the, analyze, uh, the analyzing the portfolio of the fund that you are investing in what are the investments being made? As lawyers, of course, we know what funds are el eligible or not, and we can, of course, refer this. So it's also important to be aided by professionals that will guide you through this process. So, of course, feel free to reach us at any point. Okay. So for the... For the next part of the presentation, I will talk a bit about the other uh, other types of residence visa. So as you can see, there are very different types of residence visa according to the purpose of your residence. We don't want to do here an exhaustive explanation, so I will just talk to you about a few examples, but it's also very important to analyze your situation, case-by-case -case analysis, to understand what is the best visa for you. So a few examples here is the D7 visa. So uh, this visa is actually, this visa option is actually most suitable for individuals who are fi financially independent and is actually commonly referred as the D7 visa, retirement visa, passive income visa. So this will be more appropriate visa for people that, for example, live on property income like rent, whether this income is national or foreign. So other um, another interesting visa is the the recently popular digital nomad visa, also known as the D8. The D8 visa is the most suitable option if you have an employment contract that allows you to work remotely uh, in any part of the world and you, of course, choose to come to beautiful Portugal. This will be a viable option for you. Another for example, viable option would be the D2, the business activity. This is a visa for employed workers, self-employers, entrepreneurs. It is suitable for individuals who intend to ex exercise a professional activity independently or become involved in investment activities in Portugal. For example, by establishing a business activity in Portugal. So next, we have on our next slide we have uh this is just a timeline of the residence process for third country investors 
so as, as seen, it starts with, of course, the residence visa. You ask for the residence visa, then there will be an analysis of your process. You will schedule an appointment, again, analysis of your process, and then a decision will be made on the visa application. What If you have an affirmative, if your visa is uh, approved, then you have to submit your, uh, your residence permit application. This will mean that you will eventually have to come to Portugal to SEF, now AIMA, actually. There, is, there has been a change recently, so now it's AIMA. So you will have to go to a AIMA delegation in Portugal, and then, again, after another analysis, you will receive your residence permit, finally. So I believe this is it. And now it's time for the Q&A. Fabulous. Thank you so much, Joanna. There's some really, and Joanna, yeah. <laughs> um, there's been some really insightful things on that. I've definitely learned something myself. Um, we have run over slightly, um, but for those who want to stick around, um, we will be able to answer some of your questions now. Um, we might not get around to all of your questions, but for those that we don't, we will forward your questions on to Joanna and Joanna at Matt Law, so they will be able to get back to you um, on your specific requirements should we um, not get around to you. Okay, let me just make this a little bit smaller. Um, there is also, I will point out, um, the um, the Matt Law email address just on there, should you have a more specific question for the Joannas. Okay, um, I do actually have a question, um, just generic, so I'll start on that. So, um, can you just confirm, so under my understanding, the Golden Visa now the biggest change is that you can't get the golden visa via real estate investment. Yeah. So it's purely yeah. private business investment. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Right. Fabulous. Thank you. Um, I have a question submitted before the webinar, so I'll start with that one. Okay. So Mr. Billy Amoria, Bill Amoria, apologies if I've butchered that saying, <laughs> um, is a retired pensioner. He's a UK taxpayer. He pays tax on pension and property income in the UK. He's asking how would taxation affect him if he became a resident of Portugal? Mm -hmm. Well, um, the, moving to Portugal will necessarily have implications on your, on your taxation. First, um, Portugal will have the right to tax your income worldwide because the rule is still that the country of residence is the one uh, where you have to submit your tax returns and pay your taxes however the source country we call it the source country in this case will be the uk where your pension and and property income uh, is coming from will continue taxing that that income probably the rates will vary because you'll be taxed no longer as a resident but as a non-resident the rates may vary I'm, i don't know the rates in the uk but this is something to confirm in the uk how you'll be treated as a non-resident and portugal um, you will not be double taxed that is the most important aspect so portugal does have a, a double tax treaty we call it double tax treaty in a short way um with with the uk is actually the 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 eldest uh, double tax treaty um the oldest double tax treaty signed by by portugal um many many years ago and it ensures that the source country can tax and you will um, allow you'll be allowed to accredit tax in Portugal. So um, both in your pension and in your um, property income. Okay, fine. Thank you. Um, okay, let's have a look. Um, John is asking: Are there any specific tax benefits for Madeira and the Azores? Um, well, the VAT rates are lower. Also, the personal income tax rates are lower for residents in the islands. Um, I need to confirm exactly if the new state budget also reduces even more the rates for those um, for residents in the islands. But indeed, these territories are even more benefited than than the national. The, 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 yes, the, the the ones in the in the um, in the continent. Yeah. Okay, great. 
Um, Martin's asking, how does in inheritance tax work in Portugal? I'm 67, um, should I put the property in my children's names? The, the property in Portugal or? Um, um, yeah, I, th I think so, yeah. Okay, so that, that um, regardless if the property is transferred during life or not to your children's name, um, if they inherit a, a property that is located in Portugal, they will not they will not pay any inheritance tax here in Portugal. Okay, so that is the most important aspect: is that any assets that you acquire uh, in Portugal, um, we are talking about properties, but it, it can be any other assets. In case of succession, your direct you know inherited. Uh, uh, successors, so in your direct uh, close mm -hmm. relatives, in case, in case your children, they will not pay any inheritance tax, okay? So mm -hmm. they receive these assets for free. That doesn't mean that if they sell those assets, they will not be subject to tax on any capital gains, okay? And then this is a different matter. But just by the fact of inheriting an asset, um, receiving a, 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 an inheritance, they will not be taxed, okay? That's great news. Thank you. Okay, um, Lawrence is asking, his, him and his wife are looking to semi-retire to Portugal next year. Um, they are in the planning process now. Um, so he's asking, would you recommend they apply for the NHR visa now before the 31st of December? Uh, they are coming from the UK? Or... Uh, I'm... I'm guessing so. Um, okay. I mean, a bit different, Lawrence. <laughs> okay, um, that will uh, uh, depend whether they they already have any um, effective steps on the their relocation to Portugal. So the the old NHR, the, the current NHR in place, it's only legible. Uh, for those who already meet the requirements but haven't yet already registered as NHR, but they can prove that the requirements are met, um, or to those who were preparing their move to Portugal. So if Lawrence already has a visa appointment, um, then Lawrence and his wife, uh, if, if the wife is also joining under a family reunification right, for example, uh, they will be allowed to get uh, the old NHR and still get the 10% taxation on pension income. Okay, fine. thank you. Um, Annie is asking, I've heard planning a move to Portugal could include an account like WISE rather than a Portuguese bank. Is that the case? And does this does getting the visa appointment mean applying to VFS overseas? Yes, the visa appointment is actually the, 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 the appointment with VFS. VFS is uh, indeed has the the competence of um, processing some visas uh, 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 on behalf of the Portuguese um, foreign minister uh, abroad, um, depending, you know, if you're in the UK, you'll have an appointment with VFS. If you are in uh, Canada, you will have to go to the consulate. So it, it depends. But yes, it's the VFS appointment. With regards to the wise um, question, it's, um, I think I would interpret the, the question as, do I need a Portuguese bank account or can I use a WISE or um, a, another account, uh, uh -huh. an alternative account in, 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 in abroad? You can use uh, an account abroad. However, at a certain point, you will be required to open a bank account in Portugal. Of course, you need to prove that you have means of subsistence. It's one of the requirements for the, the visa process, which uh, Joanna can go into detail if, if needed. Um, and it, usually we recommend having a bank account in Portugal, even if you don't have all the funds, the minimum um, funds required in this Portuguese bank account. You have it, you know, combined with a Portuguese and a foreign account. But if you understand that moving to a country, it's normal to open a bank account in that country. You will need it for your daily routine, for example, if you want to pay your bills here. So it's also an evidence, it's a proof of your um, goodwill, of your intention of moving here. Yeah, your commitment, really. Yes, exactly. Exactly, Rosie. Okay, cool. Um, okay, what is the flat tax rate on foreign pension income? On foreign pension income, there is no flat 
tax rate on, on mm -hmm. pension income, at least um, from 2024 onwards. So the NHR, the old NHR indeed had mm -hmm. a 10% flat rate on foreign pension income, which was very, very attractive. Um, uh, actually, until 2020 was a zero mm -hmm. tax rate, was a tax exemption. Um, so now the pension income will be taxed at the progressive rates, as I, as I was explaining. Mm -hmm. If there is a taxation at the source country, as I was explaining, I, if I'm not wrong, to Lawrence um, a, a few minutes ago, um, there will be a credit tax mechanism to avoid double taxation. Okay, so no, this is about this slide is about. Um, Sorry, I was just flicking through. I thought that was one on that. <laughs> no, that is a flat rate on rental income. Mm -hmm. There are a few types of income that have flat rates in Portugal mainly capital income so interests uh interest from from deposits or 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 capital uh, income is taxed at 28 percent rate and mm -hmm. also the property the property um income is also taxed at the 28 percent rate with exception for the specific um benefit for housing lease agreements uh, which is aimed to uh, increase the offer on the housing market which can be reduced up to 5%, as we were explaining before. Okay, fabulous, thank you. Um, Roger has asked, um, what would be, as of 2024, what would be the tax status of an EU citizen looking to retire to Portugal? Um, I would um, not um, conclude that the fact that this, this person is coming from a, a, a country in the EU will have a different taxation from, for example, someone coming from the UK. Okay. Uh, again, the, 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 the rationale is always the same. You move to Portugal means, means that you make Portugal your basis, so your center of interest, you move here, and Portugal will have the power to tax your income worldwide. If you receive foreign income, that income has to be declared in Portugal, but you will be entitled to credit tax. So Portugal has a, a large um, set of double tax treaties uh, signed with all the European countries and many others um, to make sure that double taxation does not occur. So it, it has to go on a case by case analysis, whether mm -hmm. your situation will be um, that you will be only taxed in the country of residency in Portugal, for example, or if you're the source country, you will still have any power to tax. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Um, sorry, there's still a lot of questions coming through. We do have to, to cut off at 20 past. Mm -hmm. So um, we will forward your questions on to Joanna and Joanna. Yes, of course. With pleasure. Um, let's have... Um, what are the time frames for getting a D7 residency um, permit visa? Joanna, okay. okay. To you. Yes. So the process of actually obtaining a visa starts on the applicant's country of origin and can take up to 60 days. But once the visa is approved, it will be valid for two entries in Portuguese territory. After the visa is attached to the passport, it has a validity of four months. In this period, the applicant should apply for the residence permit. Uh, although it is quite common that the emission of the residence card will only occur after the validity of the visa expires, but you will still be entitled to stay as long as you have the appointment proof at CEF. But let's just say, so firstly, four months, and then you should ask for your residence permit, which will be, after approved, valid for about a year, for a year, actually, not about. Fab, thank you, Joanna. Um, I think we've got time for a couple more questions. Um, so Artemisa, I hope I said that right, um, is asking the new NHR, does that no longer apply to US citizens looking to retire to Portugal? Well, um, the new NHR uh, is limited, well, it's really narrow to certain um, professionals, as I said. So, and no longer uh, offers the 10% flat rate on pension income. So, 
I, I'm guessing now as the question is um, oriented for someone willing to retire from from the US. Um, yes so the answer is 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 no however that person no no that person will not benefit from the moving to portugal tax uh, benefit because if this uh, income is uh, treated as pension income or if that person is has income only from pension uh, and and pension funds for example it is unlikely to fall into the categories of work or self-employment business income and therefore to benefit from the 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 50 percent cut of the new uh, tax benefit mm, so no no there is no option here okay fabulous thank you um and last question i've just spotted and obviously lost um where has it gone um, I think it was asking about the digital nomad visa. Um, where has it gone? Sorry. Um, how much tax is owed on the digital nomad visa and how much time has to be spent in Portugal? How much? Sorry, can you please repeat that? How, how, how much time do you have to spend in Portugal? Okay, this is... Uh, Joanna, you go on. Uh, for the second part of the question, how much time it will be a year because it is a residence visa. There are also other requirements um, because I saw another question related to the D8 visa. So maybe it will be better also to explain that there are some requirements like if you come with an employment contract, you have to prove that you have that employment contract. If you come uh, working independently, you must also prove that you are working independently so that you have a contract of, of doing services for another company. You have also to prove that you have means of subsistency, uh, mm -hmm. but the time will be a year. Yeah, at least. I, then I, you can also I think stay the longer. question, sorry, Rosie. But the first part of the text. We yeah. discussed directly with the, with the audience so we could also interpret the questions. But mm -hmm. I feel, I guess, Joanna, if I'm not wrong, that, you know, there is also always a question on, okay, the golden visa allows me to stay in Portugal very short periods. How long do I have to stay in Portugal if I have a standard visa, like a D7 or a D8 or any, yes. any other visa? I think the question is more on this. At least, yes, at least 183 days of the year. Correct? No, that is for, yeah. for, for tax residency. A, a residence visa, regardless of, of a, a standard one. So we always have the this difference. Golden visa is the exceptional one, very yes. minimum periods of stay. Then you have the traditional normal visas, which is all the umbrella that Joanna explained, the D7, the D8, the D2, mm -hmm. all the other. And these visas, they are designed to people who are willing to actually live and reside in Portugal. So it's not, the question is not how long do I have to stay in Portugal, is how long can I not be in Portugal? Yeah, I think it was like the minimum amount of time to qualify. Exactly. So you have to actually be in the country. Otherwise, if you don't reside here, you don't need a residence permit because you're not a resident. So you have to be in the country during the duration of the, of the visa for, um, sorry, you can leave the country during the duration of the visa for, if I'm not wrong, um, eight interpolated months or six consecutive months okay, okay. Uh, and the visa duration the residence permit duration initially is temporary uh, so it lasts for two years if i'm not wrong joanna is two years it was extended to three years during the covid uh, because you know the process of renewal was a, a nightmare yes. so the government just said okay extended it's, to two years. Years. it's all extended to Two to three years, mm -hmm. but now I think it's two, right, Rana? Yes, it's two now. Yes, two yeah. years. So the first, when you get the residence permit, that permit will be temporarily valid for two years. In these two years, you can leave the country without giving any explanation or any any reason, any justification. You can leave for six consecutive months. So in one year or between the two years, you can. For example, between October and March, the year after, you can be absent of the country or eight interpolated months, for example, four months in the first year and four months in the second year. 
okay and without complying with this you will know you'll not lose your residence permit okay, okay fabulous Thank you so much. rosie this is quite <laughs> yeah, of course, don't you worry. Um, that is about all we've got time for today in today's session. Yeah. Thank you to Joanna and Joanna. It's been lovely having Matt Law here again. Um, you shared some brilliant knowledge with us today, and thank you to all of our listeners for joining us. Um, we do strongly recommend that you get in touch with Matt Law directly um, to discuss your requirements in detail, and we will be in touch with their details shortly, along with a link to this presentation if you wanted to watch it again. Okay. Perfect. Thank, Thank you. you all. Thank, Thank you, you so much. much. Before we finish, I would invite, like to invite you to leave us a review on Trustpilot if you found this webinar helpful. Thanks again, and hopefully we'll see you in Portugal soon. Thank you, and Merry Thank Christmas to you. Merry Christmas. Bye. Bye-bye.